The Present by Adam J. Wollstoneholm The last time we stayed at Harbour Cottage, we woke to find that our holiday had become unrecognisable. I think I was six and you'll have been nearly eight. I remember I still took my little pony to bed with me and you were getting too old for your Transformers. The previous night, Mum and Dad had been drinking and laughing with Uncle Pete and Auntie Clara. We could hear them downstairs as we lay talking in bed. But in the morning, it was strangely quiet. We crept downstairs to find bottles, glasses and abandoned meals scattered around the kitchen. There was broken glass on the floor. And then we heard voices upstairs. Mum shouting and crying. Dad's voice softer and pleading. There was no sound from Pete and Clara's room. Eventually, Dad appeared. His eyes were swollen, red-tinged smudges in his pale face. Where are Uncle Pete and Auntie Clara? you asked. What's wrong with Mummy? Dad looked out of the window at the space where their car had been. I suppose they had to go. Come on, kids. Let's clear up before Mummy comes down. When Mum came down, she looked even worse than Dad. She was shaking furiously as she bundled us breakfastless into our coats and shoes. Where are we going? said Dad. We're going out, Mum said to Dad. She said, you do what you want. Go find Clara. I'm sure Pete will understand. Dad just watched as Mum dragged us out of the house and to the car. She parked at the nearby rocky beach. It was a bright, cold day, still early, and the beach was empty. I took a bucket from the car, but couldn't find a spade, and didn't dare to ask for one. In silence, we walked down to the old jetty. Suddenly, Mum sank down into the stones and lit a cigarette, shielding it from the wind with a shaking hand. Mum looked out to see where a solitary gull was taking dives at something hiding in the sharp grey water. Where have Uncle Pete and Auntie Clara gone? I said. Mum just looked at me as if she was in pain. I wanted to comfort her, but was afraid I'd done something wrong. She looked so angry. So I just stood there, cold and wretched on the stony beach clutching my useless bucket. Tom, why don't you take your sister for a paddle or something? I'll be along in a minute. We walked up the beach. Let's hide and maybe she'll come looking for us, you said. So we climbed over the jetty, out of sight. Eventually, we gave up hope of her following and sat helpless on the stones. Tom... Why is Mummy so upset? I don't know. But I felt you knew more than I did, that you and the adult world were keeping from me some vital information. Did Mummy fall out with Aunt Clara? I asked. You shrugged, gazed off towards the jetty. I thought I saw a thin cloud from Mum's cigarette rise from behind the jetty, only to be snatched away in the wind. I felt we had to do something and began picking up stones and putting them in the bucket. Let's make Mummy a present. I was worried that you'd laugh, dismiss the idea as childish or girlish, but you didn't. You held the bucket while I chose the stones. Sometimes I had to delve down to where they were wet and sandy to find the best ones. I remember feeling reassured with each clink of stone against stone, as if the fullness of the bucket was a defence against our suddenly unpredictable world. Then you had another idea. You took out the prettiest four stones, packed the bucket almost to the brim with smaller ones, and then placed the four chosen ones on top. There we are, you said. A family of four, just like ours. There was nothing else to be done. We clutched the present between us as we made the fearful journey across the stony beach towards our mother. 
towards whatever was going to happen next.